Okay, let's see how that does us. Uh, our OBS. I jammed my finger on a few too many buttons and I think it got confused. Happens to the best of us. Yep. Yeah, he accidentally streamed a Picardo instead, now we gotta deal with a DMCA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we're live. Okay. So let's get a chat up. Let's get that up. Uh, do I need anything else? Nah, I think we're good. Get that up. Okay. So... Let's just jump into it, I suppose. <laughs> So this one I've never seen played. Never? Never. Okay. Like I said, I only did the Game Boy one. Yeah, this one is pretty different, even, like, mechanically, than the uh, other game. Whereas that one, you just jump on heads. This one has, like, kind of a weird drop kick thing and dash mechanics and whatnot. I like drop kicking, and yeah. I like dashing. I'm also really excited to play this y Tune Tiny T game. Yeah. That's the uh, DLC. <laughs> yeah, I didn't buy that, so unfortunately we can't play the White Dune Tiny Team minigame. Can we at least do online multiplayer for our stream monsters? Maybe. Maybe. We'll have to see. How is that different than the students, though? I never understood that. What? When... Animals escape. I mean, yeah, they're animals. Oh boy, this feels way different. Okay. So we have to do, like, this weird kick thing. Damn! Double shot. This is appropriately SNES paced. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Ooh. Nice that it gives you these high mobility options, but. Given all the enemies and shit, you probably don't ever want to use it, just like Bubsy. Yeah. We just killed the frog. I got a glass carrot. Killed Mission J Frog. <laughs> Mission J Frog lives on in all of our hearts. Oops. Oops. Whoa. Let me out! I think out. the getting his revenge! Let me out, I'm in hell. <laughs> this is only stage one. Okay. Woof! Damn it. Well, I mean, you got back, like, a lot of health. So I like that oh, already. Sand slows. sand slows you down. Like it's got the cool dash mechanics. A little bit of wall jumping. Yeah, you're like a little uniracer right there. God damn, <laughs> what were the architects thinking though? I don't know, <laughs> probably something like let's crush and kill our students. Well, Purdue did that to us just as well. Mm -hmm. Only with uh, I mean, printer usage all, fees. That's all universities right there. You want some books, kid? Here's some <laughs> books. I got some books for you. Well, fuck art. Here's a drawing of a naked baby. <laughs> Nothing weird about that at all. Hey, it's Dave's oh, he's got dash Buff McGruff. He's got, <laughs> he's got the dash mechanic too. Stay the fuck away from my anime, kid. <laughs> Thank you. 
Oops. I want to see what's up here. <laughs> I guess on the bright side, on top of whatever degree you get from Acme University, you're also a certified um, ultimate ninja. Yeah. Yeah, fucking really. But they have standard <laughs> degrees like, you know, computer repair. Oops, I forgot for a second that you can't jump on them. They can jump on me, I can't jump on them. Also, you can't even, you can jump on them, it has to be the drop kick. Yeah, it has to be the drop kick. These look like they came straight out of James Pond. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, there was a second item in that shaft, but apparently I had to dash from the ledge. Sorry, Dave, your 100% run's ruined. Damn. Now I've lost all respect right. in the speedrunning community. <laughs> you guys have no, screen share, right? No, you probably gain right? respect. Yeah. Okay. You gain respect in the speedrunning community. They don't <laughs> pick up items. Who the fuck picks up items? Whoa! Are you supposed to hit him? You're supposed to knock the food into his mouth because he's too dumb to eat it himself. Alright, so this is actually kind of like, uh, the Game Boy had a... You have to get a bunch of them to help you out, and the fight with Dizzy was very similar to this. Only he had some food he couldn't eat. Yeah, he's not a bad guy, he's just, you know, he's in here, he doesn't need to be in here, and he's, he, you know, messing things up. So this is pretty similar to that part. Yeah. I mean, this is usually what happens when a freshman gets into the cafeteria anyway. Yep. Yeah, like he has a sundae, you know, maybe a little bit of burger, and then just spins around and destroys everything. Yeah! Yeah, I'm not gonna tell the guy he can't spin, you know, that's what he does. I mean, you, you pay one swipe with your card, and you all you can eat. Yep. That's the promise they make to us. Yep. It's in writing. Get yourself a sleeping bag, find somewhere nice and quiet, wait for the next meal. After wrecking half, half, half the cafeteria. So are you really a good person after that? <laughs> well, like, couldn't I mean, you have just asked him to like wait? I mean, I guess we could have tried reasoning with him, but that's not the Buster Bunny way. <laughs> that's it, not the sixteen bit way. Yeah, that doesn't Things involve just weren't intricate enough. That doesn't involve jumping. Okay. Buster only has two settings walk and drop kick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, who are we gonna get? Oh, not this piece of shit. <laughs> I don't even <laughs> like this character. Bird. Isn't she a McDonald's mascot? No, she's like supposed to be the analog to Tweety, which also sucks. It's it's Stone Tweety. It's like girl Tweety. And Tweety was already pretty girly. Okay, so we have to guess which one's gonna be bigger. I mean, I get, we could get like a one-up right off the bat and just use Almira, but let's... She's plucky. And, yeah, it's... why not? Whatever. Alright! Uh, they're the same. Which loon weighs more? You gotta be kidding me. Oh, God. <laughs> if I draw every single one of these things, like, the odds are astronomical that I draw. Okay, he go. won that one. But that means you're probably gonna win one exactly in return. Yeah. I'm fatter! <laughs> happy about that. <laughs> hey, you actually came out on top. Yeah. Look at how sad little Beeper looks. 
Oh. Look how sad. Oh man, Rexy. Look at they looked that they lost. Whoa. This seems like the conceptual opposite to the game you just played, in terms of difficulty. It's literally like a rock, paper, scissors game. Just with... three different kinds of weight, as opposed to rock, paper, scissors, like... No, I meant all the tutorials and stuff. Oh no, I was trying to do Lord Licorice and Chat Thieves, so there's a name for that kind of game, oh. but I can't remember what it is. I mean, it's essentially just a win-loser draw game. Yeah. Like, all the mini-games are pretty simple. There's one that's like a maze. Oh god, that dog. But it's funner when you embarrass all your friends in the process. Yeah. Oh yeah. Make all your friends feel real self-conscious. Yeah, I mean, like call the... You know, call them either fat or too thin. No in-between. I'm gonna throw my tomato to the ground. Well, he's throwing his tomatoes, too. We are a lot of tomatoes this, here. We're a tomato hating town here. Oh, yeah, now Our we gotta do jump very, rope. The floors are very, very sticky. Just like the cowboys did. <laughs> jump rope. So if all you drink enough of this moonshine, you'll jump rope with anybody. What the hell? Yes, I'm hitting behind me. Just call it a cross-up. Drop kick this dog in the face. Watch out for the chandelier that would have killed you. So, this dog appeared in like... It's, it's really obscure. The actual Looney Tunes dog it's based on, you know, like the... Mark Anthony, where it's like the big dog and he finds the kitten. Yeah. And then yeah. he like wants to take care of the kitten. It's based on that, and his name is Barky Marky. <laughs> <laughs> and he appeared in like maybe two episodes. Shit, he took all your laser discs. Fuck. Holy shit, you just mash right through fucking steel! Yeah, that guy didn't have I any tomatoes. They... No! Oh. Dave, you're not male. Well, I try to be. Thanks for reminding me. I wish... <laughs> I wish they made a boss after the, uh... Stalker? Um... Peppy? Well, no, like, there was a, uh... There was a, a guy who was, like, the biggest, uh, fan of... Uh, oh, one of the voice yeah, actors. this Chris is... McNeil. Have you heard about this? I think it might have been mentioned in I Know That Voice. Okay. Didn't she have, like, somebody who was obsessed with Babs? Yeah. And would routinely send her messages in mail? Yes, um... And, and Fifi, uh, Le Pew. Yeah, and Fifi. So, this guy was, um... And this is back in the days when, like, Usenet was the big online, like, forum thing. Yeah. Um... He was, like, a known, like, furry. Which, you know, I'm not shit-talking to anybody right now, but even furries didn't like this guy. Um, he would continually call and, like, mail Tress McNeil with all these, like, fantasies about Babs and Fifi. And it got to the point where, um, Tress McNeil didn't want to renew, you know, to be a voice on Tiny Toons anymore, just to move away from that. Like she, like, she had to cancel conventions that she was going to. Like, I think at one point he showed up at her house, left her phone messages. It was bizarre. It was bad. And, I sure hope she left him a bear trap. And, um, 
actually, I think it was like as a show of solidarity, he was like his character. They made him into a character and lampooned him on like an episode of Tiny Toons and Animaniacs. Man. Where uh -huh. he's this like creepy obsessive fan that that's like asking when when's Fifi going to get her own show. Um, basically, and any time, if you ever see a thing Tress McNeil is on, and there's a fan who can name an episode by its, like, serial number or production number, they're making fun of that guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, or it uh... could be him. Or, or it could be him. Uh, they made fun of him on Simpsons when, um... Because Tress McNeil, uh, did the voice of Itchy and Scratchy. Yep. So, um, on the episode where Homer, on the episode with Poochie, where Homer is on a, the voice actor panel at the comic book shop, and the nerds are like, uh... Like asking him these really stupid in, questions. In episode, in episode number 1F201, uh, it looks like they uh, Itchy hits Scratchy's rib the same time twice in succession, yet it produces two different notes. Is this some sort of a, uh, a magic, magic xylophone? xylophone? Uh, apparently that guy's vo mannerisms and ability to quote, like, episodes by his, like, production title yeah. is taken directly from this guy. Just, like, really obscure trivia. And then they did, like, um, the one where it's, like, um... The Animaniacs, please, please, please get a life foundation. <laughs> yes. Shit. Where it's like they show this nerd uh, that's just just spouting nothing but cartoon trivia. Oh, and they made him look like like. And that was, was actually he... like the stuff that they put into that was like actual internet like complaints and discussions <laughs> that they yeah. just lifted off of Usenet forums. They were smart. Yeah. They let the best material- they took- they were, they knew the best material was already written for them. Like, I imagine it must be really kind of surreal to see this thing that you made and, like, people enjoying it, but they- you see it get twisted into something like that. You don't <laughs> want to say people can enjoy my work wrong, but they were enjoying their work wrong. Yeah. When you start affecting the well-being of any participant in that project, yeah. Like, I wonder what Lauren Faust must think when she sees some of the things that she sees. Oh god, I can only imagine. She's dead inside, I'm certain. I mean, she's been really supportive, actually, you know, as supportive as somebody can be, but I imagine that it must be kind of a freak-out thing sometimes. Uh, I think most people who work sure. in animation nowadays are... Pretty steadfast in Whew, believing that, that porn one. is going to be made of whatever they're doing. You just keep tossing, buddy. You, you do you. Yeah, give me that carrot. Like, honestly, I think they probably have seen, like, heard the horror stories of the 90s like that, and, uh, are probably expecting the worst of it. Hello, Moon. Now we got new and interesting ways for fans to destroy the life of creators. Like yeah. Twitter. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. You know that show you guys made? Well... I don't think the characters were gay enough. You need to make it gayer. <laughs> it wasn't sufficiently gay for my tastes. Uh, yeah, hi. You made a, uh, a remake of a show based on the 80s, and you've taken a, a character who is uh, 17, and a character who's 25, and... I can't stop thinking about them having sex. Can you not make them so attractive? Because the age difference is kind of getting to me. I demand that you tell us right now what Bert and Ernie's sexual orientation is. I really wouldn't be surprised if someone went up to PBS and was like... Someone probably has. Tell us that. 
like the big things I... right now are like Steven Universe and like the Voltron remake and I haven't seen any of these shows but I might as well have. Is because... Voltron really that big? It kind of yeah. is. Yeah. And it's good like as someone who loved the original like 80s Voltron the new one is really good but the fans are trash fire garbage yeah. people. Like mm, I remember back, animation fans. Yeah, I remember back when Invader Zim was out and yeah the fan base was obnoxious, but this is something else entirely. Then Johan Vasquez had nothing but contempt for his audience, which you know what? Good on him. Did he really? Yeah he did. He uh, did not he, he was not a fan of Invader Zim fans. That's kind to of to the point weird. where he would routinely uh torment them with just oh, yeah. abrupt mentions that he would never be working on Invader Zim again. Or like teases like an Invader Zim lost episode or something. Yeah, he was <laughs> he was pretty awful about I it. Wonder now look why. At it. I wonder got... why specifically he didn't like them. Ah, <sighs> well. Shit, that's not fair. Ooh. Uh, bah, bah, He's pretty bah, upset bah, bah, that you destroyed his multi-million dollar train. Well, he was kind of a dick to me, so... Now we're, I've now we're quits. Hey, you gotta work together. Mash the fuck out of it. I'm pressing up and down. When you hit 88 when miles per hour, you're gonna hits see some serious miles shit. Per hour. <laughs> okay, we need. I some... mean, I guess, I guess the reason was he, you know, if you look at any of his like earlier comics and whatnot, he was really not made for children's like. But like, I wonder he why wasn't. he agreed. No, no. <laughs> oh, God damn it. You know what? I'm save stating next time because I don't want to get that fucker a third time. <laughs> I mean, I guess you agreed to do it because it's like a chance and you don't think it's going to go very far. And then it just fucking blew up. Ugh. Well. Dave, I think it's safe to say you fucking blew it. Come on, I have to get I'm something not... here. Mouse. Fuck. Oh, oh my god, look at entire... Gogo. Look at how sad he is. You he just looks... can't take this game oh anymore, Dave. God. You better not get it again. He looks like he's fucking depressed. <laughs> my god. Oh, by the way, apparently there is no button mashing involved with the um that cart. It's just makes you think it is. That's Castlevania. Buster, it's probably going to take you a solid 30 to 40 minutes to run over there. <laughs> See, that's one thing I didn't really like that Tiny Toons did sometime, where it's like, oh, look, it's the cliché. We're still going to do it, but it's the cliché. We admitted it. We pointed it out. That means it's okay. See, yeah. Tiny Toons was kind of like the less brutal version of Animaniacs when it came to self-referential animation comedy. Like, Animaniacs was nothing but contempt, but this, this, I mean, it still wore cynicism on its sleeve, but it was good for kids. Uh-huh. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I still like some of the stuff that Tiny Toons did. Like, uh, there's one episode where, like, they're learning how to do wild takes, and... Plucky does, like, one that he's told that he's not supposed to do, and then he gets stuck in it. <laughs> so he, like, walks around school, he's like this giant eyeball now. 
Jesus. Yeah. Oh he has, yeah. Shit, he has I to like try that. and figure out how to get out of it. Where are all the red skeletons? I mean, in a way, I think a lot of uh, Animaniacs was a result of making Tiny Toons. You know did what? Did Tiny Toons come first? I yeah. think so. I think Tiny Toons is like they the did. first big uh, Steven Spielberg joint. Hmm. Like the it first the step same... into Steven Spielberg animation. The same team more or less did Tiny Toons, Animaniacs, and then Freakazoid, like one after another. And wow. in a way, the their like the humor that they're going for grew respectively with each like the kids who watched Tiny Toons became the became the kids uh, who watched the Animaniacs, yeah. And then became the teenagers who watched Freakazoid. Freakazoid was a fucking institution itself. Yeah. Hey, I loved it. It was way ahead of its time. I mean, Freakazoid seemed just like something that they loved to do. Like, they just yeah. loved it. If anything had to make a comeback, I actually think Freakazoid would be a real... Would... would I, I think Freakazoid would appeal to 2017 real well. 2017 sensibilities. <laughs> Is Amblin Entertainment still a thing? I don't know, actually. I, I mean, the entire it. thing in it about, uh, oh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm obsessed with the internet. Oh, that's so sad. Yeah. <laughs> like. This is my life. That's so very, very sad. <laughs> and well, then considering they have, that like... came out in, what, like, the mid to late 90s before the internet really became what it is now, they successfully predicted somebody who hooks himself up to the internet going completely batshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that happens on a daily basis now. Only if it were 2017, Freakers would be so much more racist. I'd like to believe he still scours the better parts of the internet. Yeah. Like, if it was made now, he'd be, like, big into YouTube poops, I guess. <laughs> he would be a YouTube poop. Just a living YouTube poop. Yeah. Jesus, those fucking Castlevania stained glass windows. What the heck? I already hit you. Ooh! He made an enemy in Count Chocula today. Okay, could- am I just- are you just immortal? I mean... Are you supposed to is... just keep- okay, I guess you did keep going. I didn't know if this was a boss fight. I don't know, I guess he's just not a one-kick wonder. Whew. Oh, that's... Oof. Well, like, I'm just reminded of, like, the, uh... Every time they try and make, like, an AI that's, like, influenced by people on Twitter and it ends up becoming, like, a Nazi-loving sex fiend. Is that what happens? Yeah. I mean, Microsoft Did... tried to make a, uh... Microsoft tried to make an AI robot that could be programmed by Twitter. And it literally became a meme-loving, Nazi, sex-obsessed, like, robot in, like, a matter of 16 hours. Wow. Yeah, then they had to lobotomize it. <laughs> yeah, and then they had to kill it. Dave, okay. I don't know if this guy can die. I think it's just to run past him or something. I think it only... you know what? Yeah, fuck this guy. I don't know how he managed to kill it last time. I think I didn't. I think he just went away. Oh my god. Wow. Dumpstered. Garbage disposal, what a way to go. <laughs> okay, let's just take our hits and, and go. See there we go. Oh, for God's sake. I would never attend mass here. I don't know, the seen, stained glass windows are nice, churches. you know. I've seen weirder churches. 
Yeah. Like silent Scientology churches. Ugh, they won't break your bones like this. Yeah. Like, they won't put you on the giant hammers until you're at least level 3. <laughs> you gotta give them like 9 or 10 thousand dollars first. Yeah. This game's getting cute with us. Okay, I got my carrots. I'm not actually getting carrots, I'm getting carrot trophies. They were so ahead of their time. not look happy. So now it's Maniac Mansion. Yeah. Dr. Gene Splicer looking good here. Yeah. He always looked really weird in the series. And we're fighting the Kimura. Yep, the ultimate Kimura. Fucking decapitated looking balls right there. <laughs> this, this guy was in the show too. Was he like their version of Max Monster? Max Monster? Whatever the monster's name was. Oh, Gossamer? No. I probably shouldn't have said that out loud. What? The Talking about the big red monster thing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. his name was Gossamer. What, if you say his name three times, does it come out of your mirror and kill you, or...? No. Nah. No, nah, he might walk around a little bit, though. For some reason, I always thought his name was Max Monster. It, mm, I don't know. I remember, like, officially his name was Gossamer. Maybe, oh, it is. I'm, maybe he was referred to something else. Apparently, in 2002, Dale Earnhardt Jr. ran a... Gossamer car at a, uh, at a sh <laughs> speedway and run one. And he was in an episode of the Beetlejuice cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> 